my name is Sri Naya, and um, I joined Columbia, the Department of Computer Science at Columbia in 1991. So I've been here for about 16 years. And uh, during this time, one of the things we've done in the department is to develop the Center for Vision and Graphics Research. The Computer Vision Lab at Columbia is essentially interested in building machines that can see. We are interested in emulating human vision in a computer. That is the capture of images, the processing of images, and then trying to figure out what's in the scene that the image includes. And within this realm, we are essentially interested in three aspects of the problem. The first is what I call physics-based models for both computer vision and computer graphics. That is, we are interested in the interaction of light with materials. We want to understand why things look the way they do. Why does rain look a certain way and, and fog? How does that manifest in an image? Very, very complex things. The other interesting thing about appearance itself of anything is that it changes with time. So things decay or uh, there's the weathering of, of bricks and metals and everything else. So we are trying to create mathematical models of appearance of these various things that are found in the real world. So we can use it to interpret images in the case of computer vision, at the same time synthesize images in the case of computer graphics. The second area which we are very interested in is the creation of new types of cameras. And that's a very exciting space because it requires you to create new types of hardware, which is cameras, and accompanying software that's able to then achieve these different manipulations of the image. Here is an example of a 360 degree camera that captures everything within this circular field of view. That is, it's able to see you, me, and everything else that is in this panoramic field of view. And the way it does it is that it essentially captures light using one mirror that comes in to the bottom here. And that mirror then reflects the light into a second mirror. And that mirror then forces the light through a hole in the first mirror into a lens where a camera captures a circular donut-shaped image. And that image, of course, looks warped and distorted, but it includes the complete field of view around this camera. And then using software, you're able to unwrap this captured image to create a natural-looking image that one can look at and understand what's going on in the real world. So we have developed robots that are circular, that you can actually roll on the ground. And as you roll it, this device continues to stay upward looking and is able to get an insect view of the world, if you will, and transmit it back to a remote location where a person can wear a head-mounted display and essentially look around like as if he or she were actually sitting inside the robot and rolling with it. We're very interested in developing cameras that capture images that after the fact, after they've been captured, allow a user to move around within that visual space. That is, in three dimensions, you want to be able to perhaps change your perspective after the picture has been taken. So we're very interested in sort of redefining the image, creating cameras that capture new forms of visual information, be it high dynamic range in terms of color and brightness, field of view, like I mentioned in the case of 360 degree cameras, or seeing more than three colors, red, green, and blue. All of these can be viewed as different dimensions of imaging and we're exploring new devices, creating new devices that produce new types of images. And the last area is, um, I would say, more traditional computer vision, which is we are interested in algorithms or programs that are able to recognize objects and images. The machine can make judgments, it can track people, it can understand their, their activities, it can figure out where it is in the case of a robot. And so all of these capabilities require one to perceive the scene visually. And that's where, the, that's where it becomes interesting. For example, the, the recovery of three-dimensional structures of scenes from two-dimensional images, which is something that you and I do on a daily basis. We are able to just open our eyes and perceive the entire environment, and that's what makes, allows us to function in a very seamless fashion. And what's interesting about a field like computer vision is that the mathematics that we develop and the, and the software that we develop to solve these problems are models that are of use to neuroscientists and psychologists, and they use them at, as hypotheses as, as, as to how the brain might actually solve some of these problems. Um, and so there is a very interesting relationship there 
where computer science is contributing to the pure sciences as well. You know, there's so many unknowns. A big part of it is really defining the problem. It's a new field. You know, that's one of the exciting things about being in a field that you have a shot at defining the problems of the field. And that's very, very exciting. That's what makes computer science really exciting, I believe.